I've been developing games now for five years, but I have a confession. I've only learned the Unity game engine. Now, I'm a monogamous kind of gal, so I haven't felt a need to stray too far from what I know, but game dev isn't life, it's pleasure. So I've decided to see if I can learn how to make a game in Scratch in 24 hours. Scratch is the original vibe coding. No code, no syntax, just Lego blocks. And to be honest, one of the reasons I haven't tried other engines is because visual scripting scares the shit out of me. And even super advanced engines like Unreal primarily use visual scripting. So even though Scratch is made for kids, I'm curious to see if it could be a gateway for me into other, more advanced engines. I have managed to get some blocks in place and get it to repeat back my name. No, I did not. But there are things that are like so much easier to do here, like glide one second to random position. This requires like the knowledge of lerp and coroutines in Unity, which is not an easy thing to, to get to. It's just like linear interpolation built into the engine is really cool and quite advanced. Oh, wizard toad, a unicorn. And then even like this, like the backdrop thing. So the idea is that it's flappy ghost gonna be mechanics of Flappy Bird, which is a really easy game to build, but it's gonna be with a ghost. So we're gonna put a little bit of our spin on it, add a little art, and uh, see how we go. Usually in these games, like the player is stagnant. The player is not actually moving left and right. It's the world coming to the player. So I am gonna need probably a better background. And then I'm gonna need a way to spawn these guys in, and the background in, so it never stops, so it's infinite. Um, okay, that's the next one. Okay, this is actually really cool. There's a lot that's consistent between this and Unity and other game engines. I think just because it's object oriented, but I could definitely see how this could help you wrap your mind around just the logic of creating things for games. Like, yes, it's limited and it's a little confusing because it's limited, but the structure is very, very similar. I just discovered something called make a block because my code here is getting a little bit out of hand so I can make a block. I'm going to name it reset. And then now everything that I have, because like I want my player to its size to reset and its position to reset when the game starts. So I can take all of this logic over here and this is like a function essentially. And now I can just take this and reset it. So now I can actually call this. I don't need to have this anymore. Delete, delete, delete. And this becomes just a function of my thing. So if I want to, I can just have little things going on all the time. So instead of like all of this, now I can create another block and it's object specific. My blocks aren't on my other objects. So this is like DIY functions over here. We're gonna say, ew ghost movement. Okay, so now in forever all I have is ghost movement and I, it's a canvas so I can put it anywhere I want to. So now my script is simply this and it should still work.
right, we're at a pretty good stopping point. Let's uh, let's play this. Very buggy, but cute. <laughs> Okay, so it's 10 p.m. I'm finally done with this. It's really cool. Scratch is cool. Am I gonna be building anything crazy on it? No. Am I gonna be, you know, putting things on the app store and creating new games with this? Probably not, but I think it is doing exactly what it is intended to do, which is it teaches you how to think like a programmer. I will say there are things that are like objectively easier in Scratch, but there are also things that are objectively easier in Unity. Like Scratch doesn't really have this sense of like prefabs or classes, so you have to do like a lot of duplication. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.